Good morning. Our greeting to all our parishioners and all those who may be visiting is taken from our mission statement. One Eucharistic community at Holy Cross welcomes all to faith in Jesus Christ. This weekend, we are pleased to welcome our newest addition to our Holy Cross parish staff. Our warmest wishes are extended to Father Jorge Ramirez as he begins his ministry here at Holy Cross. Please be sure to stop and meet Father George and welcome him to our Holy Cross community. Today's readings may be found in a red worship hymnal number 1150. Christ sends us out as laborers for his harvest. Let us reflect on how well we have labored and ask that we may rejoice in the gifts God gives us. As we get ready for our Eucharistic celebration, we ask that you silence all cell phones and take a quiet moment or two to prepare our hearts to hear God's word and to participate in the offering of the Mass. Our celebrant for Mass today is Father Whelan. He'll be assisted by Father Ramirez and assisted again by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join us in our entrance hymn, number 611, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, number 611. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
And now I'd like Father George uh, to say a few words to you as an introduction of himself to our parish. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I'm glad. Uh, my name is Father Jorge Ivan Ramirez Velasquez. I think it's too long name. So call me just Father George. It's fine. Uh, actually, everybody calls me George in Colombia. My aunt, for example, called me Georgie. You know, so it's familiar for me to hear George. Um, I'm very glad to be here to assist Father Willan and Father Riff in the parish, uh, the, also to help the Diocese of Rochester through this ministry in Holy Cross. Actually, when I went to the, the lake, I always said, oh, I will work in this church. I will work in this church. And now, here I am. So I think God listened to me. <laughs> And I was appointed here by Bishop Matano. So I'm very happy to be here. And I hope to uh, share with you my faith, my love for Christ, my ministry. But also, I hope to learn from you your beautiful faith in Jesus, your beautiful love in God, and also love for your brothers and sisters, your neighbor. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you around. Okay? The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this great sacrifice of Jesus, where he extends to us his mercy to give us everlasting joy and peace, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you free us from the evils of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you freed us from our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you freed us from death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, 
Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing <coughs> torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass, and the Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out out to God God with joy. joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth earth cry cry out to God God with joy. Let all the earth worship and sing praises to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me, blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let Let all all the the earth earth cry out to God God with joy. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything or does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be all who follow this rule and to Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest, to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. 
Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is telling us a similar subject that we heard last weekend during the Masses. And this subject or this topic is discipleship. It's about to be a disciple. So, what is a disciple or who is a disciple? There are three elements who character, characterize a disciple. First of all, a disciple is someone who, follow, who follows Jesus. If we remember the gospel, Jesus had 72 disciples. How many? 72. Very good. You are hearing the mass. <laughs> 72 disciples 72 people who follow Jesus Jesus also had 12 apostles how many? Wow. 12 12 apostles 72 disciples 12 apostles, right? and those people follow Jesus and they were learning what Jesus said let us remember that they called Jesus Teacher. This is the second characteristic of a disciple. A disciple is who listens to Jesus. Listens to Jesus. And the third one is the, a disciple obeys. A disciple obeys Jesus. They obey Jesus' commandments. Right? So today's gospel we heard how Jesus sent out his 72 disciples to announce the gospel of the Lord to different villages, different towns, different cities. At the beginning, they were 72 disciples. But today, there are no any more 72 disciples. Today, we are millions of disciples of Jesus around the world. You and I are disciples of Jesus. All of us. That means that when you come to the church, you come to follow Jesus. I don't think this is a place for vacations. This is a place to have a personal encounter with Jesus. Right? To have a personal and closer encounter with the Lord. This is why all of us are here in the church. Because we want to follow Jesus. And we want also to listen to Jesus. We hear every Mass during Sundays, if you come only for weekends, or if you come every day, daily Mass, we hear, we hear how Jesus, or better, we listen how Jesus taught not only his disciples, but also he's teaching us today what to do. We are disciples because we listen to Jesus. We listen to Him, right? We listen to Him. We listen to Jesus. We are disciples. But also, also, we are sent out to announce the gospel of the Lord to everybody when the Mass is ended. The deacon at the end of the Mass says, Go in peace. The mass is sended. Or he says something similar. Right? And he sent us out in the name of Jesus to announce the gospel of the Lord wherever we are. But the big question is how? 
How to go out to announce the gospel of the Lord when the society many times don't like to hear anything about Jesus. This is a big problem today. We are not allowed to talk about God in many places. So how to talk about God, how to talk about Jesus in our, in our places where we work, we study, we live, or in the supermarket, or in the bookstore, or wherever we are. This is a one of the difficult questions today, and, and the answer is simple. It's easy. If we remember the gospel, Jesus said to his dis uh, uh, disciples, don't take anything with you. Don't take clothes, don't take money, don't take food, don't take sandals, don't take anything. Obviously, we need this kind of stuff to live. Obviously, we need clothes, we need food, we need uh, sandals or today shoes, sneakers, whatever. We need this kind of stuff. But the real meaning of this command of the Lord is don't complicate your life at the moment to announce the gospel. We think that we need to do extraordinary things in our lives in order to, to announce the name of Jesus to our brothers and sisters who don't know who Jesus is. Don't complicate it. So, how to announce the gospel? First of all, it's obviously we need to be followers of Jesus. We come to the church, we are here, we listen to Jesus' words in the liturgy of the, of the world, and we hear what to do with our lives. Secondly, we need to announce the gospel of the Lord, obviously, with our words. But it doesn't mean that I go everywhere. For example, this is a Bible. I go everywhere, knock in the door, and say to everybody, Do you know Jesus? This is a way to do that. But it's not really what Jesus is, is asking us. You are able, if you are able to announce the gospel, you are able to talk the whole time about Jesus. It's good, it's perfect. But better than that is announce the gospel of the Lord with your words. How? First of all, don't say bad words. A good Christian use a good vocabulary, right? Especially with children. We need to care for our children. So be careful what you say in front of the children. But also say, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening. Say to your wife, I love you. Say to your husband, I love you. How was your work? Say to your children, do you have a lot of work, a lot of homework? Can I help you with something? Go to your job. Hey, I hope you are okay. Say in the supermarket, thank you when you, res when you pay for your food, for example. Simple things that we can demonstrate that we are Jesus' followers. Simple things. We don't need to do anything strange. We need to do simple things in our lives. Once again, to say thank you, to say good morning, to say, to say good afternoon, how can I help you? These kind of things help us to demonstrate that we are Jesus' followers, that we are disciples of Jesus. And the third way, the third uh, step to, to announce the gospel of the Lord is with our acts, with our works. If you cook, cook very well for your children, for your family, for your friends, right? With love. If you work, don't say, oh, no, it's Monday again. I don't want to work. No. Enjoy. Smile. It's Monday. Go to work. I know it's hard. Especially Monday, it's hard to, to go to work. But try to, 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 to give this to God and say, oh, God, I, give, I will give you this work. 
and you work with love, with a smiling, be nice, and you work. When you do your homework, do it because it's for your good, for your own goodness. Do your homework for the school. Not only for a grade to have A+, plus. no. It's because you want to learn. So this is a way to demonstrate that you are a follower, follower of Jesus. We are a follower of Jesus. When you clean the house, clean the house well. I think it's a good way to live in a place where it's clean, isn't it? It's, it's good. So these ways, we, through these ways, we demonstrate that we are followers foul of Jesus. And everybody else who watches us is saying, oh, this person is different. This person is really a Christian. This person really is a follower of Jesus. Is a truly disciple of Jesus. So, first of all, once again, come to the church, listen to Jesus, and obey what Jesus says. Second, use your words properly, talk well. Third, try to work accordingly to your Christian life. But also the gospel tells us that we need to pray for more people who want to announce the gospel of the Lord outside. You and I are going out to announce the gospel with our lives. But we need more people who are ready to go out to announce the gospel of the Lord. Pray for vocations. Pray for priests, for deacons, for seminarians. For religious women and men who are ready to go out to announce the gospel of the Lord. I am one of them. Pray for me. I came from a different country, different culture, Colombia. My first language is Spanish. It's not easy to be here. But because of your prayers, because of the church, I am ready to say I am here and go out to announce the gospel of the Lord. So when you want a Spanish homily, just let me know and I can preach in Spanish. <laughs> it should be easier for me. But anyway, pray for more people who announce the gospel of the Lord. Pray for your brothers and sisters who are not here today with you. They are maybe far away from the church. Pray for them, that they come back, they listen to Jesus, they become really a disciple of Jesus and going out to announce the gospel of the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, in this Eucharist, let us remind these two things. Let us remember these two things. First of all, we need to go out to announce the gospel of the Lord. And second one, we need to pray for more vocations, for more people who want to go out to announce the gospel of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And we have the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Virgin Mary, and the Amen. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and glory of life, who has saith and through the scripts. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I will the Lord to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the Lord of Amen. 
Let us pray. As the Lord Jesus called the apostles and the disciples, he has called all of us in baptism to be proclaimers of his good news, proclaimers of his love. Let us look and see how we can do that today and every day of our life. And through these petitions, lift us up to see the goodness of God around us. We pray for the church that we may faithfully announce the good news by our lives and draw others to Christ through our deeds of love and compassionate words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that God will turn hearts from violence and guide all toward safety, justice, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for blessings of our nation as we celebrate Independence Day this week and for the protection of our men and women serving in the military. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for the priesthood of Father Jorge Ramirez, that God will watch over him and guide him as he begins his time here at Holy Cross, and that we will support him with our prayers, love, and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those suffering from physical, mental, or spiritual illness, that they may find health, strength, and peace for their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our deceased, that they may share eternal life in heaven, especially Lynn Parkering, father of Karen Marsh, Jenny Lauk, and for James Kerwin, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are that merciful God, that God who brings us grace, brings us mercy. Help us to do that in our own lives. Help us to pray for one another, to pray for goodness in the world, to pray for the Spirit of God to be among us. And that will give us strength to live as you wish and to proclaim your gospel always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second collection today is for emerging churches. And please join in the offertory hymn, number 790, Lord, you give the Great Commission, number 790.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and all God's church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring, us, bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, so that by whose obedience we have been restored to your, those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring there to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our bishop, 
and don't declare them. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Christ.
anyone this morning take communion to the homebound or to the sick of our parish, please come to the altar. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements. There will be one Mass at 9 a.m. this Monday, July 4th, in observance of the holiday. Next Sunday, we will welcome Deacon Michael Merritt as our homilist at the Saturday 5 p.m. and the Sunday 10 a.m. and noon Masses. And there will be a reception in the Parish Center following the 10 a.m. and noon Masses. Please join us on Sunday, July 17th at 7 p.m. for a reunion concert featuring former Holy Cross musicians to celebrate Father Whelan's 50th anniversary of ordination, the Hanukkah. Catherine Evans, John Gasper, Mark Helm, Sarah McConnell, and Jennifer Pasquale, and will present a variety program including music for organ, piano, trumpet, harp, and voice. Envelopes containing our festival raffle tickets are in the sand pails at the doors of the church. Please help us by taking them home with you and bring them back to the church or parish office with a cash payment for the tickets. We cannot mail them out, nor can we take checks or credit cards in payment. There are $6,000 in prizes. Please help to make our raffle a success. There is an early bird drawing on July 11th. The big drawing will be at the festival on Saturday, July 30th. And remember, it's only three to three and a half weeks until Holy Cross Festival. There are many ways for you to help and support our parish at the festival. Please see our bulletin or website at holycross.org for these and all parish details. And there will be a coffee hour in the parish center after this Mass. I want to thank Hannah, who's our director of the choir, who's filling in this week for Sarah as our organist, who did a wonderful job. Thank you, Hannah.
I want to thank Bill Brown for his singing at this Mass. The cantors are off for the summer, but some of the cantors come and sing for us and help us. That's great. So thank you, Bill. And the concert we have coming up on the 17th will be a very, very special concert. There will be members of our music department for over the last 30 years, different ones, coming back to help us to be able to sing and to recognize the great music that we have had here at the Holy Cross. So if you have an opportunity on the 17th at 7 o'clock, please come and join us. I'd like to extend my sympathy to Karen Marsh, whose father died last week. Our prayers and our sympathies go to her. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord by serving one another and preaching the gospel with our words and deeds. Thanks be to God. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring.